Top five dead or alive. Hey, what's up, baby? You know what I'm saying? Long away to long overdue, man. Let's get right to it. No doubt. You know what I mean? We here, baby. It's beautiful. It feels good. The time is right. You know? One of the things that definitely feels right is the record with you, Neo, Nipsey Hussle. Oh, yeah. Ain't nothing new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? We're just trying to make good music, you know, sonically. Just, you know, breath of fresh air for the people. Try to do it all, you know? So what other collaborations we got on that album, man? Um, I got Jeezy on there. I got Wiz Khalif on there. I got Nas on there. I got Wheezy on there. I got um, Styles P, Sheik Luch. Um, I got Young Buck on there. OK. Um, just some good music, man, you know? Now, as far as with you and Wiz, was it an actual like session where he came through, or you know what I'm saying? How did how that go down? Because I know some smoke was in there. I know some serious situation. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what the song is uh, is about. You know that. Um, he wasn't actually there, but I like to call. You know, I'm I'm like a nag when I'm trying to get you on the song, just so the the chemistry is right. Right. I mean, you could feel. I want you to. I wanted to feel like we was there, and. When you hear this song, all of the features sound like we was there, even though some of them was there, some of them was not. But the chemistry and the sonic, the sonically, sonicness sounds like it was all, we was all there, you know what I mean? I try to keep everything on the same page. All right, so let's run it back a little bit, you know what I'm saying, the history when Mary actually gave the, the tape to Diddy, right? That's it. You, you know how Diddy always puts people through the ring, you know what I'm saying, through trials and tribulations. Did he ask, you know what I'm saying, actually test y'all? You know what I'm saying, did he put y'all through some tests before he's like, okay, I'm gonna rock with y'all? Not really. He, came, he made us rhyme. One of the first meetings we went to see him, he made us rap, though. He, I think he was getting a haircut or something. We just did rhyming. He's getting a haircut. They spinning him around in the chair and all that. But, um... We was flipping like on our manager when he when we went back to the car, but he was like, nah, he just testing y'all. And he still was listening, but he just was trying to see if y'all was gonna get mad or say something or you know what I mean? So that was really the only test he tried. Okay. Now listen, we got this bust over here. We gotta bring that up, we gotta make that a topic of discussion real quick. We gotta talk about that one. Hall of Fame bust coming out. Yeah, um, just wanted to do something different. Not everybody do the typical album shoot or you know, the photo shoot and pick the pictures and same thing. I just want to do something different. Right, hold on, we got to bring that up if you got it right there real quick. You're getting it right right now. Oh, take oh. a little, yeah, take a couple seconds then. Got his own, yeah, it got his, got his own life. Man. He got his own bunk, <laughs> own bunk on the tour bus, own Instagram account, you know what I mean? He got his own hats, his own ice, all that. Own women. You're going to see him at the party. He's going to be in the VIP. It's going to be like like that Ted, like the teddy bear, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure the teddy bear and um and um something about burning. Okay, yeah, now so we got the marble slab. Yeah, we got this. We got the setup. <laughs> you want to face it then? You want? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to see. We got to see. We got to see the whole. Nice. 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 All right. So let's talk about it from the beginning. So how did that even come about, man? Man, my partner, Ice Pick J, was like, yo, this album, you know, you got to do something different. You want to do something historical. Like, it's a, it's a time. It's a, you need a timeless timepiece for this album. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yo, I think you should do a bust. I'm like, what the hell is a bust? Like, one of them Hall of Fame statue joints, man. I'm not sure if they going to like I'm not sure if the people is going to understand it or, you know, accept it. But... It was more, more people knew about these things than I knew, like, you know what I mean? Then once he showed me the Hall of Fame actual, a whole thing of them, I'm like, that might be cool, you know what I mean? Put it in a museum. I'm trying to get it in Canton, Ohio, though, and sit it next to Walter Payton or one of them. And you gonna bust out the yellow jacket or whatever, Yeah, I'm gonna right? get the jacket and all that. That's where I'm gonna do the photo shoot at Canton, Ohio, in the Hall of Fame with the yellow jacket next to, you know, Deion Sanders and all of them. And all of the and all of them type of dudes and just do that. So far, craziest moment on stage, man. Early locks days, um, we had a show in North Carolina somewhere. It was one of them double stage joints. Like they got up and then they got, you know, another stage that's closer to the people. Me for some reason 
wanting to get close to the people, jumped down from the other stage to the other stage and went through the stage. <laughs> it was crazy. Then, Styles and Luch is up there laughing at me. Then for some reason, Sheik jumped down and he's even bigger, so we went more down. We went down. We had sheet rock up to the neck. It was crazy. We kept rocking, though. The, it wasn't like there was a... The crowd went like, oh! Yeah. We never stopped rocking throughout the whole thing, so they looking at this... But they still hearing the, the we were still going, you know what I mean? The chemistry was still going, but it was that was funny. And the P was just up. And we had to end up stopping the show for a minute because Styles was up there crying on his back, <laughs> laughing like he was at a comedy show. So nowadays people talk about ghost riding and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? And they're saying that now that really doesn't matter. How do you feel about that? That hurts me that, you know, people don't really care about ghost writing. Um, I think it, I, I think it's, it's not bad if you let it be known. You know what I mean? I don't think you can really, I don't think you can really talk mess or pop junk or, you know, I, I don't think you can really toot your own horn like that if you, um, if somebody's writing it for you. You know what I mean? But nowadays it's a different, music changes every three to five years and this, this is just one of them changes. Like I think, the people really only care about the finished product now. Do you, you feel I mean? like certain artists, like now, they should have like an asterisk, you know what I'm saying, next to their name? You know what I'm saying? I know Meek and Drake got in a little situation. You know what I'm saying? I know there's other artists, but do you feel like artists that's on top, they should have like an asterisk, like a Pete Rose type situation? I, they should have something. There should be some type of notification there. You know what I mean? I don't think you could get... That's just me, though. I don't, you know... The writing is the hard part of it. That's the challenge. That's the, you know, the, your creativity is 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 what makes your brand. Mm. You know what I mean? So is, is somebody else helping make your brand? I don't know. Where do you, how do you look at that? Okay, okay. So let me ask you this question. I know that's like, working on the Diddy and also you've also had a chance to do like ghostwriting too as, as well, right? Yeah, I did a, I did a numerous, a numerous amount of ghostwriting since I've been in the game. I really didn't like it at first. I ain't really, you know, I ain't really feel it. I ain't really, I didn't really like doing it because I felt I was giving too much of me. You know what I mean? I felt people was trying to suck up, suck up the, you know, suck up my kissness. <laughs> but um, after I learned how to start keeping myself separate and ink you something different, it's pretty cool. Can you take us back to like to the first time like Diddy called you like look and you just come work there? Diddy, like, Diddy in the beginning, Diddy, Diddy tried to trap me in there. You know what I mean, he just wanted me in there all day, just writing them joints, and that's probably started the first bit of tension with uh, with me and him because I didn't, I didn't want to do it. Right. You know I mean, I didn't understand. Thought I thought he was happy with the Benjamins. I gave you a classic, dog. <laughs> I gave you a time. I gave you something that's forever. But um, nah, nah, that's my big bro. Um, yeah, that that whole thing is a, it's fun, it's a, it's, it's it's funny. I think, I think it has to be some kind of chemistry there. Right. You know what I mean? Like Quinn Miller and Drake, they got a great chemistry. For whatever, however they do it, or whatever it is, is it's incredible. The out, the songs is incredible. But that's because Drake can write his own stuff too. So it ain't. See, it's different forms of it. He mm -hmm. probably so busy and doing so much. He, know what I mean? Because he write for people. So right. I don't, is it Quentin Miller writing some? So it's, it's just crazy. I mean, once the rush and the demand comes so heavy, he probably needs some. Probably got too much stuff to do. Uh -huh. You never know what it, never know what it is. Well, Me, for my era, though, is you have to write it. Like, right. I mean, somebody, I can get stuck on a line, maybe two lines, but not all. I can't sit there while you make the whole thing and go in the booth and say, hey, say this. I really don't know. I, Me, personally, I, that just don't sit right with me.